It's funny, I can see my guests jamming to that song right now, off screen. <laughs> Welcome to the Styles cast, it's West Styles. My guest's going to be Blaine Weaver here in just a second. He's got a brand new film coming out on streaming services in VOD called Getaway. I've had the pleasure of having him on the show before and talk about this film. But finally, the rest of the world going to get to see it at last and uh, if you haven't seen this film yet, you definitely need to. Blaine joins us now. There he is. Here How I am. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, man. Appreciate your time as always. And you have been, I, I think over the years, I tried looking back on how many times we have talked over the years, but every time you have a project, we always catch up. I love talking to you and thank you again for coming on and, and talking about Getaway here, going to be available on VOD and DVD for the world on December 22nd. Because, you know, when I think of the holiday season, I think of a horror slasher film. Right, right. Knives and blood and masks and, of course, uh, some uh, campground in the middle of nowhere and Christmas. They just go hand in hand. Absolutely, man. And you know, here you go. You know, this film um, earlier in the year, it had its run during the film circuits. And, uh, you know, COVID changed everything this year. We've, we've known that. We talked about it, uh, you know, ad nauseum over this past year, uh, just with friends, the news and stuff like that. Now it's getting to see its release at last. How does it feel to know that it's finally happening? It's it's great. I mean, obviously, it's always uh, satisfying when a movie that you worked on for so long gets to uh, come out for an audience, you know. Um, and with with COVID, as you mentioned, we were going to, you know, do like a big film festival circuit. And then we were going to do like a premiere and all that stuff. And all that stuff kind of got put to the wayside. But we did get to do some really cool drive-in uh, uh, performances and whatnot with some Q&As. Oh, cool. And I'd never even been to a drive-in. So, like, we got to play drive-ins kind of all across the country with this movie. And the response was fantastic. But now, in the comfort of your own home, uh, you can watch... Get away, which I'm very excited about. I want to go back real quick to a statement. You've never been to a drive-in before? Never been. I uh, grew up in Bossier City, Louisiana. No drive-in in Bossier City, Louisiana. And then I lived in L.A. for a billion trillion years and no drive-in in L.A. I've learned since COVID that there are some on the outskirts that uh, I keep hearing about. But uh, first drive-in I ever went to, uh, I got to see Getaway on the, the big screen. Fascinating. Tell me I was about to say, tell me about your experience being at a drive-in. Do you did you enjoy it? What was your overall uh, thought of it? My takeaway is it is literally exactly like the movie Grease. There is no difference. Uh, it's everything I got from the John Travolta, Olivia Newton-John uh, drive-in scenes, uh, only in real life. Like it, it's like <laughs> stepping back in time, but uh, <laughs> fascinating. All right. Well, very good. <laughs> I was like, man, I, like I grew up in Northeast Ohio. I, I, I had the ability, thankfully, there was a few small ones, but was able to go see a drive-in or two. Lived in Albany, New York. Same thing. I, I think I saw um, Man of Steel at the drive-in there. Got to see oh, World cool. War Z. Um, so I got to see a couple of those things. So it's cool in, in certain aspects, but interesting. So seeing your film, Getaway, up on the big screen, seeing such a slasher flick, what, flick, what was that like? I mean, it's it's perfect. It's perfect for drive-ins, right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. Getaway is uh, scary, but it's also fun, it, and it's uh, got a great pace. It's got some nice twists and turns in it, but it's perfect for a uh, fall night out at the drive-in. Um, yeah, I, I've gone to a couple of drive-ins. There have been some pop-ups here in L.A., so I got to see the original Superman, which is funny that you saw Man of Steel, but I saw 78 Superman and I saw Die Hard, which were both great, but they were on smaller screens. You know, it was like this pop-up okay. thing. But mm -hmm. Getaway, what we saw were like classic 1950s gigantic screen. And then we did, um, in, in one of them, we did this Q&A where some of the cast came out and everybody's like wrapped up in coats and like freezing and yelling out to the cars. You know, people are yelling <laughs> questions. It was so like, what's the right word? It was, uh, you know, just retro, like there's no microphone, there's no stage. It just feels very 
perfect for getaway. You know? What did you say? What was that? <laughs> exactly. I'm not joking. We were literally yelling at cars. <laughs> that is fantastic. I'll go back real quick again. You talk about uh, Die Hard. Your opinion, Christmas flick or not? Where's the uh, where's the, the controversy? It's obviously a Christmas movie. Now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> there was recently a YouGov poll that came out, and I posted it on our station Facebook page. And it, I mean, it caused a huge stir, but the YouGov poll, there was like 51, 53% of people that said it is not a Christmas film. I just don't understand. I don't, like, there's literally a scene where somebody has a Santa hat on. Like, <laughs> I mean, perhaps it's not uh, <laughs> conveying the message of Christmas, but it is absolutely a Christmas movie. I, I don't understand. Well, we'll talk more about Getaway in just a second. Speaking of Christmas films, you have one out as well called uh, Santa Girl. I sure do. Santa Girl streaming on Netflix as we speak. Exactly. Amazon Prime and Tubi. I love the fact that it's on Netflix. I saw it the other day. I uh, actually watched it as well again. And the either, I bring this up not just because of the holiday season. You get a good feel-good film out of it. Yeah. But this film, Santa Girl, is kind of what led to Getaway. In some, I, I don't know if ironic's the right word, but explain to me the story how Santa Girl leads to a horror flick. It's a very, very strange uh, uh, story. But I, I did. I was hired to direct Santa Girl, starring Jennifer Stone and Devin Warkheiser and Barry Boswick. Great Christmas movie, if you like Christmas movies, where Santa is actually a character. Unlike Die Hard, it is a Christmas-themed movie. Um, but uh, th that movie, I was hired to do it. I went out to Virginia, and I made that movie on location. And we were working with an L.A. production company and a Virginia production company. And then the next fall, I was going to come back and make another film uh, shooting on a, a college campus called Shenandoah University. And we were going to shoot this uh, Lifetime movie. And um, Lifetime had greenlit the movie. And I went out there to like start uh, doing the prep work. And then it all fell apart. So I'm like, ah, okay, well, we lost the financing. So I'm about to go back to Los Angeles. And the Virginia production company is like, well, wait a minute. What would it take for you to make something here? Like, do you have any ideas for anything? And I had a, a script for Getaway that uh, had been kind of just gathering dust. And I'm like, I could retrofit this and make it here if I could find a location. And I found it perfect location. And I'm like, okay, let's make this movie. And this was literally like the financing fell out in October and we had to finish the movie before Thanksgiving. So it was this crazy run, you know, where we were shooting all night long, freezing, uh, with young, inexperienced actors who I think just did a fantastic job. But like, yeah, Santa Girl led to me making Getaway. <laughs> How long were you sitting on the Getaway script? Uh, it, it's been sitting around for a long time, you know, like I'd say about 10 years. And then, but then when we got, um, you know, the cast, I started like tweaking characters and whatnot to fit you know, the, the talent that we had. And uh, so that was really fun. And also, you know, directing, you know, all the, the, the lead actors are actually like 19 to 22 years old. So they did a lot of rewriting on set of my dialogue, which might have uh, been a little dated. <laughs> um, they were constantly telling me that, uh, you know, uh, kids don't talk like this. And I'm like, okay, well then let's fix it. I'm the director. I get to take full credit of any great improvs that make it to the movie, right? <laughs> All, you know, young kids, they're, they're, co they're, co they're students of uh, Shenandoah, correct? That's right. That's right. All right. Yeah, Shenandoah University has this really great uh, conservatory for actors, for musicians and all that stuff. It's very competitive. And so we had all of these great actors to pull from. And I had this crazy idea as an independent filmmaker that what I'll do is I'll just cast these these actors and then we'll go out into the middle of nowhere we'll shoot this movie guerrilla style you know shoot all night sleep during the day blah 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 that's the big plan of course it didn't take me long to realize that they're all in school and uh they can't just spend the night at this uh campground and uh sleep all day and so there was uh, logistical nightmares and then it snowed we were on such a tight schedule and then we had a blizzard that shut us down for like two days. So our last day of filming, and I'm not kidding, this is the longest, I, I've directed eight movies, I think, and I've never done a 19 hour day. 
And that's oh, what I did on my last day in order for us to wrap before everyone went home. Uh, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, so you did, how, how long were you at the campgrounds? Like um, did you go two weekends? Did you do everything in one weekend? We, we, what we learned really quickly was that weekends were really the sweet spot for us. Mm -hmm. um, we would, cause what would happen is it was about an hour and a half from where the kids were going to school. So by the time we got out there and it got dark, we only had like three or four hours before the, everybody had to get back in the cars and go back. So we, I think we shot in the actual campground six days. Um, and yep. it was mostly Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And for the weekends, everybody stayed in the campground they had these cabins and it, it was it's a place called buffalo gap retreat in west virginia and they were so cool to us um and it's incredibly spooky and there were there were so many things that while we were on location we just saw oh we have to shoot this oh we have to have somebody coming out of there like this is also scary so we did uh about six days of that and then as the weather got worse they shut off the water and stuff so it became not practical for us to go there anymore so then we would find another location that could kind of be a campground and we stole that and so it's really three different camps at the end of the day that we, that we used um but i really i credit uh my dp chad mclarnan uh who was just so great at pivoting with me because we were constantly hitting these walls and being like ah how do we solve this and we were always moving and changing plans in order to make the coolest, most alive movie that we could. Take me through your evenings then. You guys rap. The kids are off doing whatever they, they're they doing. You're now relaxing, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but you break off from the rest of everybody else. What's your nights like then? <laughs> uh, well, Chad and I uh, were the official, only uh, professional, you know, people on right. set. Like, because it was in the middle of nowhere, I didn't really have a team. You know, I had uh, students who wanted to learn, who were anxious, you know, so they could carry stuff for us. But pretty much it was, you know, I was doing directing and producing and Chad was doing all technical aspects, uh, cinematography. He was overseeing the sound. It was, you know, a lot of stuff. So when we wrapped, you know, five, six in the morning, uh, Chad and I would go back to the grown up uh, cabin and we would have what we called knickknacks, which were these uh, airplane sized bottles of booze, as many as we could fit into our bags. And we would just <laughs> sit there and, and drink and complain about our day. That's pretty much it. And uh, I think the, the kids had more of a party kind of thing going on in their cabins, mm -hmm. but we would just sit and uh, bemoan the problems that we had the day and the problems that we were anticipating for the next day. It was not an easy shoot. I'll say that much. I can't imagine an experience. And then you had all the, uh, just the issues of, I assume a very tight budget. Oh my goodness. That is like less than nothing. Um, we, we, you know, could barely, uh, food was the biggest thing that we really spent money on, you know? Um, and uh, that was tight. Right. But it, it was the, the great thing about it was, everyone wanted to be there. You know, there, mm -hmm. there are some movies where you have plenty of money and you love the script and, you know, but there are people that are unhappy or with squeaky wheels or, you know, uh, egos. And that we had none of that. This was um, the cast and crew. Everyone was there voluntar voluntarily and excited. And uh, it was just so cool, especially working with the actors of giving him this opportunity uh, you know, I think a lot of them didn't really get it at first that this is a movie that's going to come out. This is a movie that, you know, and like, I'd have to say, okay, we have to stop now. This is real, right? Like I'm a real director. I've never made a movie that has not had a wide release. Like this is going to come out because Chad and I are very good at our jobs. So I need you to act like you're being killed right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they, they were great. And it, it, like as, as rough a shoot as it was, cold, tired, uh, uh, lacking the, uh, the, the money and whatnot that you really want to knock it home. Uh, I, I was so happy with the, the final product and uh, the experience as a whole. So you guys knew from day one this was going to come out, which yeah. again is going to be coming out here on December 22nd. VOD, you got the DVD, the Blu-ray, all that coming out. You tell these kids it's coming out. What is their initial reaction to the fact that, oh, wait a minute, this isn't just a school project that I'm piecing together for my senior year. This is a real film that 
not just my parents are going to see or, 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 or my teacher. Right. Hey, uh, it was awesome. And I think for some people, they, they bought into it immediately because they knew of the success of Santa girl. You know, it was like, I shot it in the same, you know, uh, uh, town and the same, same university there. So they knew they, it was real, but like Santa girl, we would have, um, local cast play the supporting roles. The thing that was so cool about this is that all of the main roles and everything were these young actors who had were so green and inexperienced and uh, they they just really got behind it, you know, once they saw the script and they, you know, saw the 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 level of the uh, the footage that we were getting. That, that's really where people turn is when they can look at the monitor before color correction, before we've done any magic to it and they can say that looks like a movie. And that's me. I look like a movie star. This is going to be <laughs> awesome. Uh, I'm excited. <laughs> you talk about the color correction. Sound, obviously, a big thing with any horror film. What yeah. went into putting the sound effects, the music, because music plays a big role in the film as well. Yep. All of it, you know, every little detail. What? How was doing all of that? We, we went with a, a sound mix uh, company called Studio Unknown. Um, who uh, had a long uh, resume of horror films. And it, we were very confident that they could do a great job on this. And they killed it. I mean, so much of horror is about the sound. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, Chad was constantly uh, talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre and how you think about how uh, violent and gory it is, but it's not really. You don't really see much because they didn't have much of a budget for gore. What you hear are the sounds and the sounds are so upsetting, you know, that it, it feels like you're seeing this stuff. Uh, and we, we kind of went that route and this the studio unknown did an amazing job. And uh, our composer is a very talented guy named Tim Grogan who gave us this great non-traditional scary score using all different kinds of sounds and, you know, stuff that I, is not your John Williams kind of take <laughs> on the score and uh, just killed it. And kills as well. The kills are very fantastic <laughs> throughout the film. Knowing that you guys have a small budget, you got to make the stuff look real, not hokey. You do a fantastic job. Take me through the process of creating those kills and even making them, you know, after the fact, after the uh, fact for certain kills and the way you got to shoot it, making them look real enough for the yeah. dead body. Well, I mean, you know, one thing that I really loved about this movie was I love in camera special effects. And so we did a lot of mo almost all of our special effects are actually happening in camera. So they're not, they're not uh, VFX that are done afterwards. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we do a, a little sweetening here and there, but basically we kind of reverse engineered it. We, we did research on, you know, move uh, camera tricks and uh, stunts and uh, toys that we could play with on set and then we would kind of build the action around that. And if something looked bad, then we would scrap it and change plans. And that, you know that happened one time. We had pink blood for some reason. The on the day the the blood turned out pink instead of red. So it was like, all right, well, can't use that. Let's figure out something else to do with this kill. Um, but that's the great thing about a movie like this. It <laughs> excuse me. There's so many kills uh, that we really get to play. And uh, I I think it's just a uh, uh, like a roller coaster ride. It's a popcorn movie. It's scary. Uh, it's fun. It's funny at times. Um, and like getting to try to show as many, uh, we're just putting it all on the screen. We're showing every single kill we can think of. And uh, it was really fun coming up with the stuff and then seeing it actually work was really satisfying. Can you take me back to filming everything? Was there one potential blooper, something fun that happened on set that you can remember? <laughs> you know, what's funny is like the, everyone was so professional for, for being, you know, young and inexperienced. We were moving at such a crazy rate of speed that there wasn't really a lot of time for like goofing around. You know, there were obviously, uh, mistakes there were there were you know line people would go up with lines i mean but most of it was a the funniest stuff was just our kills not working quite right we have a couple of axe uh kills where the top of the axe flew off of the the stick and got stuck in a tree and we only had that one axe so we spent about an hour 
like throwing things up into a tree, trying to get the axe head to <laughs> fall down. Did you get that all on tape? No, thank thankfully uh, that because it wasn't as funny as you think because I was just raving. I'm like, come <laughs> on, we're losing. The sun's gonna come up any minute now. You know that kind of thing. Um, there were so many times where I, Chad and I, were squeezed into the back seat of a car, like I'm holding the mic and he's holding the camera. Mm -hmm. We rode in the flatbed of a truck. For a long time and you know uh in the night scenes where uh emma norville had to drive this um uh, this truck and we had chad had put this light coming up from the dashboard and she's like i can't really see that well i'm like well we're only going a little bit we're only going you know <laughs> and then we shot it like a million times and then i got into the driver's seat to drive back to where we needed to go and i couldn't see anything i'm like emma you totally should have told me that this is blinding like <laughs> you didn't say it loud enough um we had a lot of that where people would get so cold that I didn't know they were cold until it was like, <laughs> all right, I have to get warm now. Uh, but everybody so wanted to make a good movie that we didn't have unnecessary complaining or wasting of time by being silly. It was just stuff that happened. It was like, oh, well, we, we need that ax head out of the tree. So somebody get up there. Well, and a good thing, too, is you guys at least acknowledge the fact that you filmed it in the cold you can see the breath yeah. it isn't like oh we're filming a summer film and you know not it, it's not you acknowledge the fact it's the fall there's coats and there's breaths so you're not trying right. to play off like it's something else <laughs> it, so many fun things about the movie were just us really owning our environment like owning mm -hmm. what was happening um you know we we have a lot of funny meta commentary about making movies because uh, basically these college kids are going off to this camp uh, during the off season um, to make a horror film for school, right? So you have all of the stuff that we're dealing with in making the movie they're struggling with in making their movie. Like people don't know their lines, where the prop go, you know, there, there's all these jokes that were directly reflective of what we were dealing with. You know, where's, there's this whole bit where it's like, where's the cool knife? The one that I spent 30 bucks on that like shimmers <laughs> because all I have is this plastic dumb knife. That's real. That actually happened. I'm like, I have this dumb plastic knife, but I need the one that looks real with the blood effect. Who's got it? <laughs> I can't remember. It's been a bit since I've seen the film. My apologies. The uh, one, the the, uh, the woman who plays the director in the film. Oh right, right, Miguel Haggerty. Okay, is her character to a certain degree based on something you've experienced in your life dealing with a director? Because she is such. Just like I, putting down the hammer, and everything's got to be perfect, even though we have no budget to do this. Absolutely. All of it is based on like, you know, it, this is her project and she takes it incredibly seriously and, you know, is kind of the, uh, what the, the iron fist of the crew. But then you have the producer who just, you know, really thinks that she's the most important person on the crew. And then you have the DP who thinks he's the most important person. <laughs> All of these things are absolutely real uh, from, you know, and it doesn't matter what size the movie is, but you see these, uh, archetypes all over the place when it comes to making movies. Man, and you've experienced it all. You've had a great career, so many great films, and you got a couple more in the works coming up. We'll talk about all that in just a second. Horror films in general, you know, you wrote this one. What was the catalyst to writing this film for you? You say it's been sitting in the can now for about 10 years, but what was the catalyst back then for you to write it? I just like writing all different kinds of things. And uh, okay. that's one of my favorite things is that I can go from uh, a family comedy to a horror film to a, you know, a thriller. And, um, and uh, like at the time I was writing specs, like trying to get my work out there and seen and whatnot. And I wrote this as something that I thought I could do conceivably for a budget, you know, um, little did I know that, Years and years later, I would find the perfect situation, you know, to, to make that happen. Indeed. And it's cool that you did it. It's a great film. Make sure you check it out. It's December 22nd, VOD, DVD, Blu-ray, all that stuff. Speaking of writing, there's another film that you wrote recently, Coat Road. It's out there for the world to see. American Pie, Girls Rules. And, and tell me how you got involved with that film, because... I laughed hysterically at that movie. I hope you don't mind me bringing it up. No, no, I, I, I'm really proud of that movie. I think it's, I think it's very funny. And you know, uh, basically, I 
the company uh, that I've worked for several times, Capital Arts Entertainment, it's, that's the company that made Santa Girl. Um, one of the producers from Capital Arts is uh, also a director. His name is Mike Elliott, and he was hired to direct uh, American Pie Girls Rules for Universal. And he want, felt like the script needed a rewrite. So um, he pushed Universal to hire me because we worked together so many times. And so uh, I got so excited about it. I felt like uh, I could do a lot of really fun things with the script. And uh, so I took it. And in order to get the job, I wrote the opening scene that's in the movie of uh, the character oh. climbing up <laughs> to get into the bedroom and, uh, so I wrote that scene in one evening. It was like 15 pages. I'm like, here, here's what I'd like to do with it. And, uh, Universal responded and boom, uh, I'm writing American Pie. And it was so much fun. Like it's one of those weird jobs where it's like, everybody knows what American Pie is. Right. And like, so being part of this thing that's kind of bigger than you and trying to find the tone of what makes an American Pie movie, you know, what's the difference between American Pie and like these other teen sex comedy kind of things. And I think it's very specific and it was a really fun experience. Uh, also on Netflix, just saying, if you want to check that <laughs> out, I, I think you should. <laughs> yeah, Santa Girl, you got American Pie. And, you know, I, I really I, different movies again, right? You yeah. don't get much farther from American Pie to Santa Girl. Don't watch that one with your kids. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Santa Girl, you can watch with the kids. American Pie Girls rules, not so much. Uh, not to be confused. No, no doubt. And honestly, Girls rules, I honestly believe, and I texted you this, I think it holds up to the original American Pie, the very first one that came out all those years ago, before they started making sequels and the spinoffs yeah. and all that. I honestly believe it holds up to the original. It's very good and very much a part, very much like... Americana, if you will, to what's going on in the world right now. I think it's fantastic, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I mean, it's one of those things where you can do all the work on the script that you want, but if the the director doesn't share your sense of humor, if the cast is not, you know, right on, then, you know, you go. And I, I wrote a movie um, a while ago for Universal that did not, what, how do I say this? I was I was proud of the script, and the movie wasn't the script, which doesn't necessarily uh, mean it's better or worse, but it's not what I was, I thought was I was going to see. Your vision and, wasn't seen. Yeah, and like American by Girls Rules, it's like, hey, they did a really great job, you know, and like the the jokes that aren't mine that are in there are just as funny, right? As opposed to, ooh, I hope nobody thinks that I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I get to take credit for any improv that happened because uh, my name's there as a writer. <laughs> right. And I laughed hysterically. One thing that caught me off guard about that film was your appearance in it. <laughs> yeah. I, I play uh, a, a father to a teenager uh, in the beginning of the film, which is so funny because the director is like, hey, I'd like you to play this part. And I'm like, no, I'm not old enough to play that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess I am. I guess I am. <laughs> well, ironically, I uh, auditioned for... Um, the uh, the main character in American Pie One uh, when I was in you know uh, I was a teenager in L.A. and I was auditioning and I remember reading the script I got a couple of callbacks for it and now I'm playing a dad of one of the teenagers <laughs> and it's uh, it's very disconcerting I'll tell you that much <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah. I didn't realize that that you actually auditioned for that part. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this career could have taken a whole different path, man. Me and uh, me and <laughs> apple pie right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I think I like you better as you as where you're at now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Definitely, man. And, and again, you caught me off guard just in that dad character. I sat there for a second. I'm like, that's Blaine. My wife looked at it. She's like, no, it can't be. I'm like, no, that's Blaine. That's totally Blaine in makeup or, or, or dyed hair or something. I'm like, that's Blaine. It was, it was super fun because you never, like as a writer, unless you're directing it, mm -hmm. like you never get to meet the actors. You never get to be there and, you know, watch what's going on. And uh, because I had this great relationship with Mike Elliott, I, you know, I got to act, you know, with the cast and also, you know, meet the lead actresses there in like the first couple of days of shooting. And it was really satisfying. Awesome. Going back to get away the film out December 22nd, VOD, DVD. 
Um, seeing the release of the film, I want to go back to the whole uh, film circuit thing. You know, it had a few releases for you. COVID has messed everything up. Let's just briefly talk about, you know, the, the cast having to adjust to the release. How was their reactions to everything? You talked about the whole thing being at, uh, you know, a couple drive-ins. They're, they're coming out to it. What, were, what was it like for them being a part of this different way of doing things? You know, I feel like uh, people have been so, what? People have really rolled with the punches this year. And mm -hmm. this is no exception. You know, like, uh, I, I th feel like a lot of these um, young actors and stuff, they didn't get to go to their graduation. You know, they didn't get to, you know, do so many of the things that um, especially young people are live for, right? So mm -hmm. this they, they took it in stride. You know, of course, it's disappointing to not be able to, do the film festival circuit in a proper way. We, we played one festival, uh, which was a, a dead center film festival, which is a great festival. And we did it virtually. And I'm like, okay, that's it though. We're not doing any more virtual festivals right now. Let's just save it for the drive in or, you know, until this is all over. But um, you know, they, they really rolled with it. They, enjoyed the the festival was great because they got to show their family the the movie that they made you know there was still this celebratory thing even though we didn't get to do the red carpet we didn't get to do the the big premiere but um i mean they are a hundred percent behind it right now like you'll see uh, the the shares on Facebook or whatever mm -hmm. are are just great. Uh, uh, Emma Norville and uh, Danielle Carosa are like our two lead actresses, and they've just been so supportive <laughs> of everything. And it's so fun! It's so fun to see them getting excited and getting attention for it. You know, because that's what we want to do. Is we want uh, this is how I feel about every cast that I have is like when I put them in a movie, I want them to keep working as much as humanly possible. And I support that. And I'm kind of getting to launch these, these actors for this. And it, it makes me very happy uh, that they're going out there and pushing it. And, you know, they're going to be mo big movie stars someday. I mean, technically, they're movie stars now. I'm just saying. Well, no, they are. They're starring in a film. It's your <laughs> film. Are you, are you kind of in your head? I mean, any director they think about, okay, I like this person, I like that person. You start getting like a roller, a Rolodex, if you will, of people that you like working with. Are any of these folks kind of in that Rolodex now? And you're like, hmm, I could probably put them in this project coming up and so forth. Uh, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's really satisfying as a director to, to work with somebody and then have that relationship and be able to work with them again. And I, I do that on a lot of my movies. So I'm very excited about, you know, getting to work with these guys again, uh, really, for Getaway, I worked with this actor named Josh Cody, who is the kind of the bad guy in uh, Santa Girl. Uh, he's kind mm -hmm. of the foil of the the romance there, and he did a great job in that. And now, you know, he's here. He gets um, he gets beaten to death. I'm not going to tell you how, but he might <laughs> get beaten to death. So, yeah, <laughs> but like that, he's he's the only uh, one who came back on. Now that's not true. Hank Stone is in this as well, and he, yep. he played uh, Jack Frost in Santa Girl. Yeah, that's, that's Jr. Sorry, I had that wrong. Yeah, yeah but uh, it's uh, you know th this cast is so talented, and uh, they're just great. I mean, like if you can make a movie like this and get along with everybody, then that's somebody that you should work with again and again and again. Because no sleep, freezing. <laughs> I poured blood on so many poor freezing people as they lied in wet, dewy grass. Sorry about this. The blood's going to be really cold. And <laughs> if, if they can put up with me doing that, then I think uh, we at least deserve to work in a movie where we have a heater. <laughs> <laughs> and potentially no blood. <laughs> potentially no blood. Potentially no blood. There's a couple of projects you have, uh, you know, in the works or they're done and they're, you got a couple of releases. One I want to talk about real quickly, the in-between Jennifer yeah. Stone, Mindy Bledsoe, you're a part of the project. Talk to me about that one. Uh, that movie is actually, it's done. It's complete. We're doing some virtual screenings for groups right now, but it's supposed to be coming out uh, very soon in 2021, like everywhere. But it's this great uh, road trip film. It's an indie film. And what, what I love about it is um, the it's about these two women and um, the director of photography and the producer all got into two cars and drove across country and literally shot this movie as they were traveling across the country, um, which they, they talked to me about it and said, Hey, do you want to come and do this? And I'm like, that sounds awful. Uh, <laughs> have fun. Uh, but I was actually in post for Santa girl, so I couldn't, but they made this beautiful, lovely movie about, uh, 
uh, women and friendships and about uh, hidden diseases that uh, people suffer from. And uh, it's just really lovely. And the response to it has been phenomenal. Like they, it seems like they win every festival that they go to. They've got like 12 oh. awards just for that one movie, which is so satisfying. And uh, we're, we're just now starting to roll it out to, to get it to certain groups and stuff uh, for special screenings. And then it'll be coming out wide next year. Fantastic. Looking for that. It's called The In Between. You will have another film coming out. It's going to be a holiday based film. And when I say holiday based, it's not a Christmas film, but it's around a holiday. What holiday yeah. is it? It's about Valentine's Day slash Christmas. So it's both. It's a hodgepodge. Okay. It's called Cupid for Christmas. Uh, okay. And it's a uh, charming, magical romance that takes place during Christmas, but is about a. Uh, a Cupid's right hand lady who comes around and, uh, you know, makes the, the unlovable fall in love. <laughs> is this in the same universe as Santa girl, or are we doing a completely? I, separate think I really wanted it to be. I really wanted Santa and Cupid to interact <laughs> in some way. Uh, this, fa the fantastic actor, Richard kind plays Cupid in our film. And, uh, him and Barry Boswick uh, having a conversation was something I really wanted, but it just didn't happen for this one. But I think it's the same universe. Yeah, I think right. it is. Did you shoot this over in Shenandoah as well? Yeah, it, we, we also shot it there. Um, basically, it's about um, this college professor who is uh, very unlucky in love and then shows up this uh, cherubic, you know, uh, uh, Cupid mm -hmm. who uh, it tries to find love for him um but it's i i'm so happy with how it turned out we shot that movie during the pandemic and following all of the you know protocol that uh, the the unions you know mandate so it was a completely new and different experience for everyone everything from being tested three times a week with the the brain stab you know uh having to do that to an actress right before you know she goes on screen is very disconcerting of course we had to isolate the actors completely which is also hard on them but like it was a really satisfying experience everybody stayed safe and we made what i think is a, a really fun uh charming christmas movie you know this week the uh the the audio leaked to tom cruise going off on the mission impossible team because of the not wearing mask thing take me through you you mentioned a little bit about you know the testing how, how was the isolation for the actors i mean i assume when you when you got done everybody just went to the rooms or whatever the case might be yeah, it's hard because especially on location, that's part of the experience is getting mm -hmm. to hang out and, you know, talk about the day and, you know, having your knickknacks and, you know, uh, complaining <laughs> about things that went wrong. So it, it was difficult in many ways. But like I, I that rant recording that uh, Cruz did, I I feel like that is everyone's uh, a feeling when they're in charge of it. Because it's really, there's a lot of pressure on it. And it, it's very easy for, you know, people farther down the trough to like shrug their shoulders and be like, this is so stupid, you know, da, 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 da. But like when you're in charge and you know that the health and safety of these people is resting on you. And if there's any cracks in the, in the plan, then everyone is in danger. You know, it's like literally we're in the height of a pandemic. We have actors you know, kissing on screen. Like if we are not safe and have built, not built this bubble around them, then that's very dangerous. Uh, so I, I get his frustration completely. We would have safety meetings every morning. And the one things I was constantly calling people out on was just the, the social distancing. Cause it's so difficult. You forget about it. You, everybody wore their mask. Everybody had their PPE and stuff, you know, but like people would be next to each other and be like, get away from each other. <laughs> you are too close. Uh, and that was happening daily. Uh, and I had a cast and crew that took it very seriously. So I can only imagine what, what it could be like in a bigger. Yeah. Bigger production. Where, yeah. And ours was tiny. That was also a great thing. Like we, we had like 12 people on set most days. So um, that's, it's easier to wrangle that than it is mission impossible 19 or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, whatever they're on at this point right now. I've seen some photos yeah. from the set <laughs> asking people being distant, no doubt. So good to hear that. Do you know anything at this point? Are you in post pro or are you done with the project and it's ready to go to come out whenever that might be? 
Oh, you're frozen on me. We might have lost you. But at least I got a smiling photo of you right now in terms of your frozen picture. So that's good. <laughs> we might have to wait a second to see if Blaine... Oh, there we go. Oh, there you go. You're back. That was Sorry. Good. No, it's all right. But at least we had a smiling photo of you in the freeze. Like it was actually you smiling. So it wasn't like a weird, like, uh, <laughs> that would be the first time that ever happened because I promise you, like I take the worst unexpected photos of anybody. <laughs> a simple like Google that one, search right? will show you. Yeah. <laughs> so are you in post pro now? Is the film done? Do we have a release we are date? Done. It is, it is wrapped. Okay. Man, all right. I think we need to start wrapping this up. You're starting to have some internet problems over on your way. Yeah. It looks like you have some internet issues. I am so sorry to those uh, tuning in here and talking with Blaine Weaver. Getaway coming out on December 22nd. Oh, it looks like we might have Blaine back now. I'm here. Sorry. I don't, I, I hate technology and it hates me. Yeah, it's all right. It's the internet and stuff like that. I'll start wrapping here. You said you're in post pro. Go ahead. Do we have a release date? Not yet. Not yet. We're taking it out to the markets and hopefully, you know, we'll come back out before next Christmas. Okay. One uh, final thing, the topic to talk on the industry obviously has changed dr drastically this year. Uh, you know, the box office is saying they're down uh, 80%. Warner coming out and saying all their films are going to come out both in theaters and on HBO Max next year. Streaming has definitely changed the way of the world. What do you see from your side? Um, you do films a lot differently. You're very much an independent uh, director and producer. How do you see the, the industry changing on your way? I think that there is a demand for content like never before. Um, I think I'm optimistic about what 2021 holds for us. I think people are, I think Warner Brothers acted, uh, too soon. You know, I, I think the, you know, we, we're months away from a vaccine or weeks away from people getting a vaccine. And, uh, and I think, you know, 2021 is going to be people wanting to go out, wanting to see people if they, you know, if they have the money, they will go out and buy tickets to the movies if people think it's safe. And, uh, I think that just holding on for a couple more months to see, uh, would have been the, the right thing to, for Warner brothers to do. But, um, but I'm optimistic. I, I, people want to watch TV. They want to watch movies. They want, you know, more content and more content is good for people that create content. Absolutely. Looking forward to when your film is done and we get a release date. Once you get it done and shot, get away out VOD, DVD, Blu-ray, all that coming out on December 22nd, getawayhorror.com and it's getaway whore on uh, all the social platforms. Correct. That's right. All right. Blaine Weaver, stay on the line with me real quick, man. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit the, Hit the outro bed. We will Thank be you. <laughs>